everyone. Welcome to beautiful Antigua, Guatemala. I'm gonna try to do this as, as personal as possible. I wish I was there in front of you at the um, Hermosa Beach Comedy and Magic Club uh, during our annual fundraising event. But this year, the pandemic has changed everything. Um, I'm gonna try to picture you in front of me uh, and me standing in that audience, trying to you know, present you what we've done this year. Um, and I wanted to start with this, with our mobile unit. I don't know if you've ever seen a picture or a video of it, but this is where you know, our team takes all the equipment, the nurses, the driver, and they go to the rural communities to provide sexual reproductive health services and education. Um, this year has really been you know, crazy, right? Uh, so much so that I'm not even able to get a US visa because the consulate is closed and I'm not able to travel to be with you there in, in the South Bay, um, which, you know, this is this is the first year since I've been executive director that I miss it and that I, it, it's, it's interesting. I've, I've been having a hard time not being able to do this, but, you know, our, our um, group up there in the South Bay um, was creative enough to give us the idea of doing this video. Um, I'm not great at doing videos, as you can see, I'm, you know, nervous and blubbering, but I'm gonna try to do my best to show you what it is that we have here in Antigua um, at headquarters in our clinic. Um, so why don't you join me and let's go inside. Come on. Hello, Celeste. Hello, Rodrigo. Buenos días. Hello. 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 COVID protocols now. We've never had this before, but now we have to because we're a, a health center, we're a clinic, right? And the Ministry of Health is asking us to have a control center before anyone comes in into our office or clinic where temperature can be taken. Um, I've already had my questions asked this morning. So this is, was just, you know, kind of playing with you so that you can see what it is that we do every single day for anyone who comes in into our clinic. So we're gonna go inside. As you can see, one of the perks that we have by living and working in Antigua is a beautiful garden outside. Um, it's quite sunny, it's nice. I'm sorry for what you're going through in California. I've been reading about you know, the fires and everything that's going on is just you know, crazy. So um, I wish you all you know, safety and, and health and hopefully the quality of air is better. Um, I'm gonna walk you into our clinic now. As you can see, our clinic is named after Sue, our beautiful Sue Patterson. Um, this clinic was established in 2015, and you know we didn't have a clinic before that. But I always thought that working in Antigua and having you know our headquarters in Antigua, that we could serve people around Antigua, people that needed our services, vulnerable, and who have a lack of access to education and and and, and services, especially contraceptive and cervical cancer screening. So we set up the clinic. And right now, even during COVID, we're seeing anywhere between 10 and 16 patients per day. Um, demand has been high, as you know, um, contraceptive services, and in general, sexual reproductive health is an essential um, part of healthcare. And we've been trying our best to serve people around Antigua um, during these troubling times. Um, this is our clinic here. As I just mentioned, we see anywhere uh, between 10 and 16 patients. We provide um, sexual reproductive health services. We provide cervical cancer screening. Um, I don't know if you all know this, but cervical cancer is the number one cause of cancer-related deaths for women in Guatemala. So it's very important that we provide this service. Um, even in terms of contraceptive services, we provide everything except for tubal ligations. We even do vasectomies here. And just so you know, uh, when we reopened our clinic three months ago after you know, an initial um, suspension of, of operations, we've been having vasectomy clinics every Friday here in this clinic. And we've been operating on average about 10 men every single Friday. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's something that we're doing right now. As you've uh, seen and, and, and read from my emails, from our updates, we're not able to provide tubal ligations at this moment. It's the only service we're not able to provide. Um, there are many factors involved in that, but the international guidelines and best practices, what they've been telling us is that even though tubal ligations are not 
um, should not be provided right now because of the risk of COVID, that we should do the very best to provide long-acting reversible contraceptives for women as IUDs and subdermal implants and also vasectomies to men. So I, I, I feel very proud of what the team has been done. I feel very proud of their commitment to fulfilling the mission, even under these circumstances. So this is our clinic here. Um, three times a week, we set up another clinic right here next door. Um, and so we double our capacity to provide services to our patients. Um, you know, this is a, a short video. Again, I, I wish I had been there in front of you telling you what this year has been about. Um, but this is the best we can do for now. I, I do hope to travel to California sometime next year when I both have a visa and it's safe to do so. Um, and just to finish up, I just want to tell you, you know, some, some of the, uh, uh, the things that we've done this year during the pandemic. Uh, we started the year with a lot of plans, with some very optimistic uh, projections. As I told you last November, um, we were growing, we were expanding, but the pandemic, you know, hit the brakes on us, which gave us an opportunity to slow down, um, to think, to evaluate, and also to create uh, the proper protocols to continue our work during this time. Um, <laughs> we just had a funny moment. Um, you know, like our comedians and magicians over there at the, at the Magic and, and Comedy Club, they're doing improv. Um, we're doing improv right here, right now. And our cameraman just got a, a, a phone call on his iPhone. So, you know, small interruption, but here we are. This is what 2020 has been all about, right? Reinventing ourselves. You know, if we fall, get up, dust ourselves off, and continue working. Um, but this is what we've been doing at Wings. We so appreciate your support, your generous donations. Without you, we couldn't be doing what we're doing. Um, and I think, honestly, I really think that this time more than ever, sex reproductive health education and services is essential, more than ever, because we've already seen how much this pandemic has affected, negatively affected women and adolescent girls in Guatemala and worldwide. Um, they have, we as a country have gone back so many years in terms of education, nutrition, economic um, opportunities, etc. So again, your support and your donations are so appreciated. Um, I can't thank you enough. Um, and, you know, hopefully 2020 will not be an end, but a new beginning. Hopefully 2020 is nothing but a step to a better and brighter future. And we are certainly looking forward to 2021. Um, 2021 will be the year in which we celebrate our 20th anniversary. Can you imagine? The dream that Sue had back in 2001 um, is coming to 20 years. And you guys, a lot of you have been part of this adventure since then. So thank you so much. Um, again, I wish I was there with you. I wish I could give you hugs um, and, and, and have laughs and opportunity to talk as we've done so many years before. But I look forward to 2021 and I look forward to seeing you again. Um, and I look forward to Wings being better and stronger and much more committed to um, our mission than, than what we were. This pandemic has shown us so much. So with that, kisses, abrazos, please be safe and healthy, and I hope to see you again next year. Bye, everyone. I'm back. <laughs> I meant to tell you during the video that I don't know if you noticed that I have two nails painted. Well, you know, let me just briefly tell you, this was a moment of gender equality education for my boys. Um, they didn't know and they didn't believe that boys can paint your nails and that girls can do anything that boys can do. So I decided to paint two nails to show my boys that anything that boys do, girls can, and anything that girls do, boys can. So. A moment of gender equality education from my two feminist boys. Alrighty, ahora sí, abrazos, bye bye.